So in today's video, I wanted to talk about my experience with some of the quote unquote professional battlefield teams and esports organizations that I have been a part of. But first things first, I'll give you guys the backstory on me. When it comes to Battlefield, I've been playing it for a long time. Since 2002, actually. I started out with the very first one, Battlefield 1942. It was one of the few PC-only games that I really enjoyed, along with Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, and in particular BF1 and Bad Company 2, and the game I just mentioned, 1942. Those five games are my favorite games in the series. I've streamed most of those games, or just Battlefield in general, off and on over the years on Twitch. So I, I've been around for a little bit with this series compared to most other Battlefield players at least. I've also been with two of the more larger teams, or at least they were much larger in the past, with LRRP, or some people call them LERP and also Apex Predator Esports. I've also been with a few smaller teams that were not necessarily as deep or as organized as the other two I just mentioned. I'm going to talk about some of the bad experiences, which is really the whole purpose of this video. So with Team Apex, when I first joined them, they were about 90 people deep. I was with them for about six months. I met a lot of people, met a few streamers, when I first joined them though, they told me that they were ranked as the third best team. When in reality, they were one of the worst teams out there just prior to me joining that squad. I looked up their record on BPL and it was terrible. I came in at a really tough time, not just because of the amount of losing, but this was at a time when they were starting to transition they, they were starting to move on from Battlefield 1 and started moving into Battlefield 5 as that game was just being released. And that was really disappointing to me because I was not aware that we were going to be jumping ships so quickly. I mean, I, I understand you have to go to a new game and stay current with things. I get that. But both BPL and Hardcore League at that particular time uh, the two leagues that they were competing in were both still doing a lot of tournaments for Battlefield 1 because they were still organizing the teams for Battlefield 5. So to me, that decision to step away from Battlefield 1 and jump right into Battlefield 5 was a big mistake in my opinion. We could have been playing in the competitive scene a bit longer on BF1, but instead we were playing a game that wasn't ready and wasn't going to have very many competitive matches for multiple weeks. Looking back at it now, there wasn't a uh, there wasn't much of a drop off from BF1 to BF5 for me in terms of statistics, but I, I still felt like I was four times the player I was on Battlefield 1 compared to Battlefield 5. In, in terms of score per minute and capping the objective, there wasn't that much of a big difference. We're not even talking about KDR. Kill-death ratio doesn't matter at all if you simply cannot play the objective as infantry. But just from a comfort standpoint, I can tell you there was a significant difference between just playing Battlefield 1 and BF5. Never mind the competitive aspect, for me and a handful of other guys on that team, it just wasn't the right time to suddenly shift from the far better game in Battlefield 1 to a shitty Battlefield 5 game which had nothing but problems and glitches in its multiplayer for the first few months and really for the first year which made things even more difficult for the competitive side of things as you could imagine. So I, I really did not agree with that decision to jump right into a game that simply was not ready to be taken so seriously when there were so many problems with the game. That was a really poor decision to say the least. Another couple things that I, I really did not like was how things were run. That organization was run like a communist state. I can't sum it up any better than that. It was all about the one guy at the top. But there was, there was other problems too. Other people that were a part of that team 
and this is just an example, this one chick just so happened to be one of the top Battlefield streamers. And she's done really well, which is good for her, you know. But I can remember on several different occasions where she would go on and on about how we were the ones that were supposed to invite everyone or send messages because she was too busy putting makeup on for her stream on Twitch, which happened all the time. She basically couldn't handle very much. She wanted everyone else to handle every single little thing. Like, I don't mind sending invites to people or sending messages to let everyone know, like, hey, we're on right now, let's do a scrim and prepare for the game tomorrow. But I really wanted to say to her, with or without makeup, I wake up looking much better than you first thing in the morning. You don't need 20 pounds of makeup for a damn stream, okay? And making everyone else pretty much do everything, you know... The expectation from her and a few of the other streamers on that team was to support their streams and subscribe to them. And yet, I never got a single follow from any of them. They didn't even want to support me at all. It was all about them and their stream. And, and there were several situations like that which piled up over time. Other people within the team, I would try talking to, whether it was in their stream or not, and they wouldn't even respond or send any messages back. Or they would be so damn arrogant, thinking they were better than everyone else, yet whenever we did an actual scrim or an actual game against another team, where were they on the leaderboard? At the bottom, because they didn't know where the damn objective was, apparently. If you catch my drift... So with Apex Predator Esports, there was a lot of self-centered people in that organization. I ended up not talking to any of them for about a week because I got so sick of their BS and I needed to step back from all of that for a bit. And just out of the blue, I got removed from the Discord, the team, and the roster by the leader of the team. I didn't get any message. There was zero communication made by them after about six months of rolling with them. That's how they treat people. So I, I moved on and I was pretty happy I didn't have to deal with those people anymore. About a month or two after that happened, I ended up connecting with a guy that managed to help get me on Team LRRP, which stands for Long Range Recon Patrol or some people just call them LERP. There was a lot of things that happened with them. It was even worse. Largely because of some of the horrible leadership on that team. I wouldn't even call it leadership, actually. When you have somebody that's telling you to fuck off, that's not a leader. I couldn't stand him. Other people that were in charge of the comp teams or small squads they didn't even follow their own rules. In the LERP Discord, there is a requirements page. One of those stipulations is that you must have a microphone if you want to play in a comp match. That rule was not being followed at all. One of the squad leaders didn't use his mic at all or didn't have one in all the matches that he played in. Now... I haven't just been on Battlefield teams, I've been on a few for other shooter games as well over the years, but I have never, throughout all of my years of gaming, heard of somebody playing in a competitive match that did not use or have a microphone. I've talked with other players that have played on different teams. Each and every single person that I have talked to about this has openly said they have never heard of a single player that has went on to play in a competitive match without a microphone. Communication, callouts, are huge. I don't care how good the player is or what his stats are, that individual not having a mic to make callouts puts our team at a significant disadvantage. Better yet, it still amazes me how leadership from LERP did not step in and pick somebody that actually had a microphone. Any player that has a microphone and makes callouts will help you win more. Guaranteed. 
And that person that didn't have a mic also did not participate in any scrims that week and showed up 30 minutes late to the actual comp match against Team SWAT or AOTG or somebody. I was also one of the very few people that would spend hours playing with teammates preparing for a comp match. And the other people that were supposed to practice or participate in the scrims would never show up. We would be running scrims with only eight people, and sometimes we had even less people than that. That's horrible for Battlefield. And so the people like me who were on and were with some of the other players that were set to play on the roster, at the last minute, another person in leadership would put somebody else in that made zero effort to play in any of the scrims earlier. And me, the guy who has been with you for the past six or eight hours, who was supposed to be playing in the big match, all of a sudden gets cut at the last second. And leadership would put in a person that didn't play with the team at all that entire week and, quote, said he was a better player. Which was not true at all, to say the least. So he was putting in the guy that made zero team effort, and me, the guy who took the time for the team, got replaced at the last moment. I got replaced by an arrogant player that did not even have a microphone to communicate with us. Another thing that really pissed me off was when I would disconnect from a party, or if I was done for the night and I had some of my friends in the party still, some team members would just kick my buddies out of the party chat for no reason. And then the most serious situation came when I told a handful of members that I was streaming and their audio was going to be included. And what do you know? They're not watching what they're saying. Ten minutes later, all I hear is all this racist bullshit. One of the guys on LERP said the N-word multiple times while I was streaming. And I told him, dude, I'm streaming. What the fuck is your problem? To me, I don't care if you swear. I swear all the time in my stream or in my videos. I don't care about that. You guys that watch my YouTube videos all the time, you know that by now. But when you're saying the N-word, that makes people leave a stream instantly. And it's uncalled for. It's not acceptable to begin with. I understand people rage over some bullshit in a video game, okay? Especially on a EA dice game. But you can't say that. And the guy knew I was streaming. I had, I, I don't know, maybe 12 viewers in my stream. I've never seen that number drop so fast on my life. It went from 12 to 3 viewers right after that happened. Sure, 12 viewers isn't a lot of viewers to most people. But for somebody like me that only has about 500 followers on Twitch, 12 viewers is a lot of fucking people, okay? Especially to a small stream like mine. And I love how I brought all of this stuff up in the Discord, and I was told to, quote, fuck off by the owner of Lerp. And then I was later muted, so I couldn't post in the Discord, and my messages were removed from the chat as well. So finally, I just had enough, and I ended up removing myself from that team. It was complete bullshit, man. I don't have the time to put up with people like that. And let me make this clear, that entire team is not like that. I want to make that crystal clear. Collectively, we are talking about seven or eight people that were causing a problem on that team out of 80 or 85 people at that time. Most of those people were pretty chill. Unfortunately, it was mostly the assholes at the top that were in leadership positions that were causing a problem. But before I left, I got messages of support from members of the team that I didn't even really get a chance to meet yet. Texas, Fearless, and April, those guys all sent messages of support to me after I talked about some of this. I know by now some of those guys are no longer with LERP, and as for Apex Predator Esports, that team has disbanded. They went from 90 people down to about 20. And I think LERP is now at about 60 members, so they have lost some people as well. The only bad thing that has happened after I left the competitive scene for Battlefield 
is a couple of people from Lerp who have stream sniped me. One of them has to brag about 13 world records on Battlefield 1. I'm not going to say his name because he doesn't deserve any views at all, but is that really a pro player? Somebody that stream snipes, spams the plane 24-7, and camps with dynamite? Is that really a pro player? Come to think of it, I sure hope to God he has 13 records with the amount of hours he has on one game. I mean, bro, if you have over 4,000 hours played on one game, I hope you have more than just a few records on one game, dude. Stream sniping off of me occasionally and spamming the aircraft all the time. Get a job and get a life, is what I have to say about that. And the guy has went 0-13 in a comp match before while he was in the air the entire game, and yet he can't get one kill. You're in the air the whole game and can't get one kill? That's not a pro player. That's just sad, man. I, I guess those 13 world records don't add up to shit, huh? Obviously, there are a few people that should not be in the quote-unquote pro scene. What can I say? The truth hurts. But at the end of the day, for me, my time on both teams wasn't the best. Since then, I have not been a part of any other Battlefield esports organization. I have had people ask me if I wanted to get back into it, and my response has been, I don't have the time for the high school drama bullshit. There's only one or two teams I would ever even consider joining. Maybe if I started my own team, who knows? But that would be just to ensure that things are being handled the right way. Because when you have people in charge that are simply power hungry and don't know how to act their age, it's going to cause nothing but problems for everybody else. And also, I guess everything depends on if Hardcore League is ever going to make a comeback because they did suspend all future events a while back. And that league was one of the largest leagues for competitive battlefield. Anyways guys, thanks for checking this out. That's everything I really wanted to cover in this video. The last thing I did want to mention is that I hope anybody that's considering joining any esports organization understands that you have got to get to know people for a decent amount of time before you make things work in the esports community. At least that's what I have learned from this mess. Because there's there's too many bullshit people out there. Anyways, be sure to subscribe if you want to. And I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Peace.